Hello, I'm John Bassam. Welcome to Clapton Tramshed. Come on in. So Clapton Tram was built in the 1870s and it was originally a horse-drawn tram depot. You can see from the floor that we've got the original drainage from where the horses were here and you've got these dips from where the backs of the horses' hooves were. And it's just a lovely, big, bright, open warehouse with skylights running the full height of it. I found this space seven years ago and I was looking for a space which was bright and airy and you could grow lots of plants in. It's got the indestructible concrete floor, it's got the skylights and it's got, you know, lots of white walls so I can grow some quite large specimens of plants and kind of really fill the space of greenery. So most of the plants you can see here, I take cuttings from a lot of my existing plants. So I tend to only ever buy one plant and then take cuttings from it. I think the original plant probably came from Columbia Road Flower Market on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. And then, yeah, lots of cuttings happened. Uh, this is one of my recent plants, which I just got from Conservatory Archives, which is a really beautiful begonia, which has got these kind of spikes on it. So there's always new plants and new props arriving in the studio. So yeah, watering. Uh, it is my most asked question. It's a slow meditation, which I do on a Sunday. So it's not a chore or a ritual. Um, and yeah, I just go around with a small watering can on a ladder, remove any brown leaves, which do constantly appear this time of year. And yeah, just kind of have a bit of time to visit each plant and kind of have a bit of a sort out. But then I've also got little guys like this. So because they're in little fixed terrariums, they don't need watering at all. My oxalis is just beautiful. Um, it's like a kind of butterfly. So every night these leaves close and it opens fresh every day and it follows the sun around the room. So it's quite a kind of reactive plant. And again, it looks great in shoots because it's a really nice punchy purple against all green. So this is probably my one bit of diversion from the colours. I'm constantly getting a little sort out. There's a lot of things which I just assumed everyone knew. And I guess I just got it because my parents are very interested in plants and then kind of, you know, it's a natural born thing. But propagating plants is amazing that I, a lot of people just don't realise. You can just snip this off, take the leaves off, put it in water and it will root and you've got a whole new plant. But whenever I try to show them that I've taken cuttings, they think some kind of alchemy has kind of like gone, you know, taken place and it's, yeah, it's interesting. So all of these guys, you just as long as you cut a leaf node, they'll root. Um, but yeah, let's just chop it off, make sure there's a node, and it'll root, and you can put it straight in soil and kind of grow it. All these begonias are just kind of rooted in water. And it's a whole fresh new plant. So you don't need to buy a new plant every time. I wanted the space to be as relaxing and calming as possible for myself. Green uses the least amount of muscles in your eyes to actually look at it. Red uses the most. So green is naturally a very kind of calming colour to surround yourself with. And I use a lot of the similar, similar tones. Everything's painted in this Farrow and Ball Yeabridge green. It's kind of green under here, which my kitchen is that colour, my bathroom is that colour. So there's a continuity of colour all around. And it's... One, it's very calming. Two, you can take a series of photos in this space and they have a really nice sense of continuity to them because you've got that kind of coherency of colour throughout. So I'm an interior designer, but I used to work as an art director and I was getting asked to create planty backgrounds for shoots all the time. And at the end of the day, they were all going back with the crew. And it was kind of sad that we didn't have developed plants for shoots. It was all, they'd just been bought. They looked very kind of shop fresh. So another reason for creating this space was for myself, but also because there was a demand for shoot spaces which had plants in them. And the photos all look really just fresh and lovely. So it can give a brand identity something quite kind of fresh.
In this piece is a very large teak root wood table, which I bought over lockdown as a little treat to myself whilst we were doing nothing. And yeah, it took four people to carry the top and four people to carry the base, but it looks great in the backdrop. It's been on the cover of GQ and various other magazines. I bought this from Lots Road Auction in Chelsea, and it kind of had been bought by various people and been returned to the sale because nobody wanted to pay the delivery charge. This is a little Ethiopian stool, which I bought from an uh, antique dealer I know. Um, and there's lots of props like this, which can be moved around and kind of brought to a white backdrop to seek a shoot. It's a constantly evolving space, so I guess I'd really like to completely cover the ceiling of greenery. But it's the most difficult area to maintain, because if we get a brown leaf, I'm kind of up on really big ladders trying to get it five minutes before a shoot. Not that they ever really shoot up there, but I just, I hate having the <laughs> brown leaves around. So the hanging plants have just all happened over time, and it's Tradescantia, you've got the asparagus fern in this corner, there's a few begonia popped in, and then there's pothos. But yeah, it's just, every time it gets a little bit bigger, I just put another hook in and pin it up. And they've all done really well. This time of year, they can get a little bit, Lasted by the sun, especially with what sun will be coming on Friday. So in theory, it keeps it cool um, because they're constantly giving out humidity. So yeah, it's not only is it cleaning the air, but it's also slightly cooling the air to plants. So you know they cover lots of buildings with plants nowadays as like a natural form of air conditioning and stuff. This big monstera is where all my cuttings come from. So he does get chopped on a regular basis and he used to be really, really wide. But yeah, it's more than just a cutting plant now. And a lot of these pathos will just get out of control if you don't just keep snipping them. So yeah, I just keep taking cuttings. So my style of interior design, which I do for my clients, is actually not that much like this. Very kind of polished residences in Belgravia and Chelsea. So this is a kind of complete break away from my career, as it were. And yeah, I just really enjoy getting back to nature and having as healing a space as possible in London. I've had some music videos where I've done really interesting lighting. It's quite beautiful here with the light coming through in the morning. It's amazing with just a mister, a good old mister can create such great shots because you really kind of see the light kind of moving through the space. So yeah, I'm kind of tempted to give myself a little mister just so I can wake up in the morning some days and just be like, I'm in a music video. The most used part of the studio is the big green velvet sofa, which people shoot on all the time. Um, they just throw themselves down, have a portrait there, and it always works really well. The velvet shoots really well. It's a really neutral backdrop. If you're wearing a red outfit, you know, you can really pop on it. If you're wearing a tonal outfit, you can just kind of disappear into it. So yes, this is the area. And I am so desperate to change my sofa now, but every single time I try to change it, I get my regular clients getting a bit upset. So yeah, it's very tricky to evolve the space when people know it well, and they've shot here quite a few times. Because you'd think they'd want a new space each time, but they don't. <laughs> Um, oh, I had a shoot where three different celebrities all had to bring their pets in. And it was my favourite just because it was just so funny. Because three cats arrived, not in pet cat carriers, like literally celebrities with the cats on their shoulders. <laughs> and it was, yeah, for a completely open plan space, it was quite an interesting day to witness. This is a good little backdrop if you want some, you know, a bit of texture behind you. So there's lots of vases with all the cuttings. It's a darker corner, but you can control the lighting over here. So if you're using flash, it's quite easy to kind of fill in area, any areas. But the rest of the studio is very brightly lit. Oh yeah, these are my birthday present a couple of years ago to myself. They're 19th century columns, which again, I got at Lots Road Auction, but they were missing the capitals. So I got my lovely neighbour to make this for me. And then one of my favourite antique dealers, I found these little 1930s urns. So yes, they've become monstera stands. So I know everyone's really crazy for mid-century at the moment, but I was brought up in an antique dealer's family. And 
when we were younger, we smashed up mid-century cup cupboards to use as packing material for 17th and 18th century antiques. And of course, they've completely gone out of fashion and they're not worth anything that they used to be, whereas mid-century is worth a fortune now. So yeah, it's quite interesting. I was brought up with a lot of this furniture and it's what I'm interested in. So I'm collecting it whilst it's not particularly valuable. 350 year old table cost me like seven, 800 pounds. In the same auction, a 1950s for mica sideboard sold for 2000 pounds. So yeah, it makes no sense to me, but I understand obviously it follows fashions. These chairs have been used a lot. They are the Sculptura chairs by Russell Woodard. And when the light's coming through, they create the most beautiful shadows because you get this kind of gradient line on the floor. So I've had some really nice shots of the light streaming through where people just move it to a beam of light just here. And yeah, they're just kind of good low little chairs. <laughs> this is 80 quid's worth of Ikea mirror with a little bit of paint splashed on top because my mirrors got smashed all the time. So this was just like a really cheap alternative and people can move them around and bump them around as much as they want and it doesn't matter. I used to have loads of disco balls and of course they're incredibly reflective and they really annoy certain photographers when they're trying to use flash. So most of my disco balls have gone. The only one that remains is up here, but it's so dusty that it doesn't reflect anymore. So it's not that much of an issue. You just kind of got to have a disco ball in the warehouse, it's essential. My absolute favourite piece is this 17th century table. So it's 300 years old. It's practically Elizabethan. It would have been, you know, the main table in a great hall for people to use. And it's just got so much history. So yeah, a partner of this old kind of 18th century settle, which I've got. And it just gives it a really nice kind of feel in this corner. And I have had a couple of Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones actors have their portraits taken on top of it. So yeah. It's been used for those kind of things. Jack's doggy house. In you go. Go on, in you go. Oh boy. That's kind of tense. You don't want to get it, it's too hot, don't you? No. Uh, Jack's dog house was another lockdown purchase. I think I was left by myself, not knowing what to do with the lockdown. And I found this rather splendid doggy folly. It actually has a painting of it. And the original was owned by a count who had a rather amazing collection of kind of dogs and cats and art. And I found it, three people bought it before me and it kept on getting returned because their dogs didn't like it. So I got it for a bargain price. But Jack, get in, get in. Jack's not particularly fond of it either. I wish he loved it. I wish he spent all his time in it, but he doesn't. Like it is quite big in there. When you pull out all the toys and stuff. But it's a really hot sunny day, you will go in there to keep away from the sun. You're just happy chewing your day. Because I don't have a separate beauty room, the hair and beauty area is generally around here that they can set up wherever. But a folding makeup table and a rail of hangers. And yes, it's kind of, this is the best places generally people don't want to shoot in front of a doggy folly. But if they want to, it can be set up wherever. So welcome to this small and bijou bathroom. Um, I've used Rajasthani marble, which is, it's a marble which is called Rainforest Green, but it's from my favourite place in India, which is called Rajasthan. And it's got this amazing kind of muted brown and green tones in it. Um, and again, the Farron Boyer Bridge Green. And this is actually from Jakarta. So I found this sink in Jakarta, which is a petrified tree trunk. And there's all these different slices of petrified tree trunk, which are from the same tree. Um, and I found them and I shipped them back. So yeah, lots of inspiration from different countries and different places. The materials are beautiful. It's just my favourite material. It's just got such a great kind of like tone to it. And then I found these great tondicks and candlesticks, which are exactly the same marble. So they suit it all well. Um, you know, it's great that it suits shoots and it's fortunate and I will make things, you know, I'll have my little piles of flannels since lockdown to keep everyone happy so they don't have to share a tea towel, share a hand towel, sorry, but essentially I do it all for myself and it's great but it also works for shoots. Someone's coming with me. Is there room for all of us up here? Oh, 
that's too hot. So we've got the hanging chair with a few more of my kind of terrariums. This is a great place for terrariums because any plant up here will just get cooked because they're so close to the skylights. So most of my plants here are under glass. Yeah, it's another nice little backdrop for shoots. I love purple and green. There are a few little purple and green accents and my last warehouse was all purple and green because there's such a beautiful contrast of colours. But I've limited it here just because I mean, you can see this purple tried to scan here and a lot of the pots hanging out. So there are a few little bits of purple. We, it used a lot in shoots. People love the disco balls. I've got them in all different colours. I've got lots more props over here and chairs and things. And, you know, they kind of, they make a shoot. I get lots of the Strictly people. And they, Strictly people love a disco ball. <laughs> the rear mezzanine is very warm on a day like this. We can obviously put fans up here, but you're very close to the sun. So it's good if you're doing a close-up beauty shoot and you just want to get the skin. It's a really good space. But there's more chairs and props up here. There's a really nice view looking down over onto the space. So, yeah, you're going to cook. It's not made for fluffy border collies. Leading onto the space, we've got the small terrace and there's a front staircase for pedestrians and a rear staircase where all the kit comes up. And then there's just a small little terrace I've got here, which runs the full width of the property, which is also a great little shoot space. I've got lots of summery plants, I've got a poppy that's just opened here, which is just beautiful. Uh, and I've got all the tree ferns. So the nice thing about the tree ferns is they're green all year round. So it's not just a spring. Obviously the hydrangeas and stuff are only out in the summer, but there's a lot of greenery of the tree ferns, even in the winter. So I do have people shooting here in December and kind of like sticking a few fresh hydrangea heads in the plants and suddenly making it look like it's spring summer. And they, they do it quite convincingly because of all the tropical evergreen plants. And you get this really lovely dappled kind of lighting coming down here through all the tree ferns. So again, it's a really good little place to have a portrait taken just here. So thank you for joining Jack and I for a little, little tour around Clapton Tram today. I hope you can come and shoot here and get some really good shots.